My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then, one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight-note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about. chapter 2. We've been reading through that Christmas story, verses 8 through 20, and we've been seeking to unwrap love, joy, peace, and hope, because that's what the Christmas story teaches us. That's what it shares with us. That's why we do have joy in this world. You know, Christmas, it's a very simple gesture, if you think about it. It's about a baby. Came into this world. Breathed his first breath. Belted out his first cry. Maybe yawned. Stretched for the first time ever. Slowly opened his eyes. It was all in a manger. In the small town of Bethlehem. The night was cold. The sky was clear, dotted with stars, actually. Stars that would tell a story. Because this night was like no other. See, it was the birth of this child, this baby, that would tell the world that God was willing to connect with humanity. And he didn't do that with trumpets blaring or chariots blazing. He did that with a simple, ordinary, birth of a child. Mary and Joseph would hold this baby. They would hold something wild, something precious, something luminous in their arms. They held a baby, yes, but they held so much more. For the presence they held was so much more than just a baby. 
It was a presence that could only be described as Emmanuel, God with us. And that's it. That's why we can find love and joy and peace and hope in this Christmas season because of the fact that we have God with us. It was a night like no other. That night of our Savior's birth, there was no night that would ever compare to that night. Ever. Now for the innkeeper, he got caught up in the busyness of that season. There was a tax census that was taken. And so all the people were to return to their homelands for the census. And so it was very busy throughout the entire region of Palestine. And this innkeeper dismissed this young pregnant couple and sent them to the only place he had room in the stable with some musty hay. To the innkeeper, it was just an ordinary night. Had he known, had he known that that baby was his savior, was the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Perhaps he would have he would have called for the mayor. Maybe he would have just surrendered his own room for the night. But it was just an ordinary night for that innkeeper. Yes, business was good. But he dismissed the only, the only person that would ever truly deserve red carpet treatment. It was a night like no other. The shepherds were keeping watch in the fields, and it was an ordinary, dull night. Nothing new. And then suddenly, it was a night like no other. Angels were surrounding them. The glory of the Lord shone all about them, and they sang, and they shouted, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all men on whom God's favor rests. What a glorious message. They said, today, today, a Savior is born unto you. What a glorious message. What a magnificent sight. Now, had Jesus been born in a palace, the shepherds wouldn't have been welcome. They wouldn't have been able to welcome their king, their savior. But because he was born in a manger, they felt right at home. Now visits from royalty would soon come, yes, but not from the government or from magistrates, but from the magi, wise men coming from the east. And they would bring this baby gifts of gold and frankincense and they weren't caught up in the busyness or the hustle and bustle of everything that was going on. And they noticed that there was a change in the stars, a change in the pattern of the stars. And so they followed that pattern so they could worship the creator of those stars. It was a night like no other unto us a child was born and a savior has been given that is why we have joy in this world that is why it was a night like no other let's pray